When you think of the richest man in the world, what comes to mind? Probably Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, or your old school Bill Gates. But what if I were to tell you that one man had them all beat? By 700 years, as a matter of fact, we're talking about Manza Musa. He was the ninth Manza, or emperor, of the Mali Empire located in West Africa. This empire reigned until the 1600s, and boy, was he rich. In today's video, we uncover some interesting facts about the magnificent empire of Manza Musa, considered to be the most generous person, just like the modern day Mr. Beast. So stay tuned so you don't miss anything. Richer than Bezos? Now, comparing the wealth of someone in modern times to someone in the past can be tricky. However, Mansa Musa was estimated to be twice or even more richer than the wealthiest people in the world today. Even today's Forbes top richest man, Jeff Bezos, is far off from African ruler Mansa Musa. And his fortune even crossed that of the second richest man in history, Roman Emperor Augustus Caesar, whose fortune is estimated at 4.6 trillion. As of this video, Bezos' net worth is shy of 200 billion. But in modern times, Amazon rules all and no one's richer, right? Well, historians estimate Musa's net worth, if he were alive today, to be $4.7 trillion. Much greater than they had originally thought. It's estimated he had around 100,000 tons worth of gold, which amounts to half the size of Jeff Bezos's $500 million yacht, the Flying Fox. In fact, modern day Manza Musa could have had two replicas of Bezos's yacht built pretty purely out of gold. Take that, Jeff Bezos. Granted, figuring out how much money a guy from the 1300s has is no easy feat, and there are other factors to consider. But one thing is for sure, he's pretty dang rich. Now, Bezos broke records with the first human flight to space on July 20th, 2021, and it cost him about $5.5 billion or $1.38 billion a minute since he was only up there for four minutes. That's not a lot for him, of course, but if Manza Musa were alive today, he could take a round trip to space 854 times. He could spend almost a quarter of his time in space or 289 minutes if he wanted to, which is about 50 hours. In a way, this wealth is unfathomable to you or me. Imagine what we could do if we had that much money. Imagine. Maybe tell us below what you would spend it on if you had it. How did he get his money? In 1932, Musa ascended to the throne of the Mali Empire located in West Africa. He was overthrown after then King Abu Bakr II, who went on the naval expedition to the Antarctic coast and never returned. Musa was one of the most knowledgeable monarchs of the Kingdom of Mali. Manza Musa inherited a prosperous kingdom, but his continuous efforts to promote commerce made Mali Africa's wealth his country. Mali was rich in salt, gold, and elephant ivory. All these commodities were in demand during the medieval ages. In fact, Musa described gold growing like a plant in that kingdom. This valuable metal is timeless in that it's always been worth quite a bit, and if you had a lot of it, you tended to show it off. Musa was no exception. Mali, which was already an affluent kingdom, tripled in his reign. It reached 2,000 miles covering almost nine West African countries to the Atlantic coast. Mansa Musa also conquered 24 neighboring cities, including Timbuktu, a major trading hub of the medieval age. According to the British Museum, the Mali Empire accounted for over half of the gold in the Old World during his rule. Astonishing, right? Half of the world's gold means that he had almost half the wealth of the world. Approximately 250,000 tons of gold had been discovered to date. So, Mansa's gold in that era is estimated to be 100,000 tons of gold. In the modern day life, the value of this gold would be estimated at $5 trillion. The reason behind this was that Mansa Musa had unlimited access to gold reserves, which was the most valued source of wealth. Not only that, the cities he conquered were among the major trading centers of high value commodities, including gold. Old, he was a tradesman and he knew the business well. He gathered most of his wealth from trade. He had dozens of camels and slaves carrying his gold on a pilgrimage. One of the most famous examples of just how wealthy Manza was, was the tale of his travel through Egypt to Mecca. Being a Muslim, Musa started his pilgrimage journey to Hajj to Mecca, a city in Saudi Arabia, with an entourage of 50 to 60,000 people. This entourage included all the officials of his court, soldiers, entertainers, and around 10 to 12,000 slaves. The New York Victory Parade of approximately 12 to 13,000 troops is to believe to be the length of up to four miles. Imagine Musa's entourage, which was five times the New York Victory Parade, which would be at least 20 miles long. This is farther than the human eye could even see. Everyone in the entourage was dressed in the finest clothing like Yemeni silk, brocade, and marching with golden staffs in their hands. The most astonishing thing was that Musa's entourage carried with them 100 camels, each carrying a load of 300 pounds of gold. Yep, 
You heard that right. Currently, the gold rate per ounce is around $1,800. One pound of gold consists of 16 ounces. That means each camel carried approximately $8.5 million worth of gold. That means the total worth of it's estimated to be around $850 million. And if you add a minor percentage of the inflation rate, this goes approximately to $400 billion. Even the current world's largest cargo plane, Antonov, would require around 500 trips to carry Musa's gold somewhere. Of course, some viewers may find this much gold a little bit, well, disgusting. They may not like the fact that a leader even has this much wealth and isn't sharing it with the public. Well, don't worry, because the truth about Musa was that he was a philanthropist. Musa was just not hoarding that money to himself during that trip. You could call him the Mr. Beast of his time, if you will, as he would just give that money to the poor who passed by. Nowadays, billionaires may have some philanthropic work under their belt, but you're not going to see someone like Elon Musk going to a homeless camp and dunking billions of dollars in front of the public. However, Musa was simply built different. In fact, it's speculated that he gave millions to the poor. Imagine being some beggar in the street and you were made a millionaire suddenly just by happenstance. Maybe Mr. Beast is the reincarnation of Mount Musa. Someone call for a DNA test right away. Imagine Bezos driving an army of Amazon delivery trucks to give money to the poor. Wouldn't that be amazing? Besides giving money to the poor, he would build a mosque each Friday. Talk about some dedication to your faith. Actually, let's let's talk about that. He was a builder. We mentioned that Musa liked to build mosques, with legends having it that he liked to build a new one each Friday. While some were unwinding that day, Musa was just getting started. While many of those mosques are lost to time, some stand to this day. Manza Musa's development and governance made Mali one of the most prosperous and booming economies of that time. Mansa Musa is renowned for his construction works in the Mali Kingdom. Some of the most ornate structures like mosques and universities are still standing today. One of his great architectural works was the iconic Jinguerabur Mosque designed by Andalusian architect Abu S. Haq S. Sahali. It's reported that he paid the architect of this mosque around 450 pounds of gold, which is estimated to be around 8.2 million. This simply depicts the amount of wealth Manza Musa had. This was just the tip of the iceberg. He invested much more money in development projects in his kingdom. He also established many schools and libraries in Timbuktu, making it a global educational hub with students coming from all over the world. He spent too much money and ruined the economy. One of the most devastating things happened during this journey. He single-handedly crushed Egypt's economy. Mansa Musa was an extremely generous man. While passing through Cairo, a city of Egypt, he and his people spent gold lavishly and Musa gave out gold generously to the poor. His impulsive generosity, while well-intentioned, actually reduced the value of the metal in Egypt and the economy suffered a great setback. The Egyptian economy took around 10 to 12 years to recover from this stroke. Mansa Musa's generous giveaways and Lavish spending led to the devaluation of gold and resulted in economic losses worth billions in the Middle East. How much did he knock the price of gold by? It speculated as much as 20%, which is nothing to scoff at. In a more modern example, the stock market crash of 1929 made stocks worth 20% of what they used to be, which crushed the economy and caused millions of jobs to be lost and suffering as far as the eye could see. All this was caused single-handedly by Manza Musa. It's also said that Musa tried to revive the Egyptian economy on his way back by purchasing gold at higher rates. Until this tour by Musa in 1324, his kingdom and wealth were unknown to the outside world. After this incident, his fame reached Europe. Spanish cartographers crafted Musa's enormous kingdom in the famous Catalan Atlas. They depicted Musa sitting on a throne with a globe of gold in one hand and a golden staff in the other, ruling over West Africa. After returning from the pilgrimage, he continued acquiring new territories. He called conquered the territory of Gao, extending his reign to the Sahara Desert. He conquered Timbuktu. He made Timbuktu the biggest business hub of Africa. What can we say? Musa loved to spend. He did feel bad and tried to repurchase some of that gold. However, it still took over a decade for Cairo to recover. But he died at an age that wasn't too old. Money can make you live a long time, but everyone has to meet Mr. Reaper eventually. And in 1337, at the age of 57, Manza Musa died and his sons inherited his throne. While he certainly was no longer a spring chicken, he could have ruled for decades more if he had modern day healthcare. When he passed, his children inherited the empire. They were not skilled rulers like Musa. Soon, his gold kingdom crumbled. Currently, Jeff Bezos is 57 and man still looks as healthy 
healthy as a horse. Heck, he just launched William Shatner to space, who himself is 90 and looks pretty good for his age. So it's possible that Bezos may live many more decades and one day become richer than Musa. It helps that Bezos also has a lot of memory invested in anti-aging, including investing in the company Altos Labs. We could imagine that if Musa were alive today, he could do the same. Maybe he could have been immortal, or at least kept the Grim Reaper on a waiting list longer than calling tech support when he needed. However, Jeff has a long road ahead of him, as Musa is still one of the wealthiest emperors in history. This was the mesmerizing history of Manza Musa, the richest man on the planet, and his lost city of gold. So, did you know about Manza Musa? What would you do if you had all that wealth? Let us know in the comments, and as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications for the latest in history facts.